So this is a good morning from California and uh, a good evening from Western Australia this evening. I have got one of my friends, Ted Hyman, with me today. Uh, we've got a variety of things that we've been discussing. And Ted is, you know, is known as the CISO guru. Um, please look him up if you wish. But I had to ask Ted to record some of the stuff that we've been talking about just as friends because it was so, so relevant. So Ted, let's go straight in. We've been talking about controls failure a lot and point solutions. It got pretty exciting when we were talking about this and you gave me a real aha moment. Let's explore that. Tell me your thoughts around this and what CISOs are facing around controls failure and, and why point solutions just don't work anymore. Yeah, so, uh, you know, part of it goes back to just how the industry evolved. So the security industry evolved um, and, and essentially it was a bunch of startups, each trying to solve a single security problem. So, um, you know, whether whatever that specific problem was, that point solution uh, addressed it and solved it. But as as CISOs started to, to deploy more and more point solutions, it started to get very difficult and complicated uh, to maintain all these point solutions because with the limited resources and staff that they have, you know, they need somebody that needs to understand how to operate each each point solution and maybe generally two people in case one guy, guy gets hit by a bus. And so one of the reasons that CISOs talk about being understaffed is they've got this massive amount of work to do around managing all these point solutions because they do not communicate with each other and, and, and they just create massive amounts of reports that then need to be reviewed uh, to, 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 to make sure that the, uh, any alert that, that, that was, you know, that was, uh, or, or any alert or problem that was identified, you know, that's all in that report, but unless you read the report, you're not going to see it. And so, so what, what's happened is that, you know, there's two pieces that, that's happened here from the way the security industry has evolved is, is one, we needed an easy way to integrate our technology with the enterprise. And, and um, the, the more difficult it was to integrate your product with the enterprise, the less likely the enterprise was to buy your product because they are resource constrained and, and they need solutions that, um, that, they can, that they can operate. So, so the um the these all these point solutions that ev have evolved over time ha have now created this huge suck of time that resource that that CISOs just don't have and um and so so one we started ev everything was integrated via APIs we're we're going to make it really easy just use this API to integrate this point solution simple easy fast you know, no problem, right? So, so from that perspective, APIs worked. It worked. It was a great idea initially, but we didn't look at the unintended consequences of what what implementing all these APIs meant, and and then the new uh, challenge around managing APIs, uh, which is a whole new almost. I mean, there is a new industry that that around API management, and so um, so that 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 was that's a major piece. Is that is that 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 the we did what was easy at the time, and and, and then now we're dealing with the the repercussions. But you made and a. So, you must chip in because you made a really, really good point about the APIs. When we are now protecting our organization with these point solutions, we now have to protect the point solutions because they're exposed by API. And then this traffic looks normal. And that is a problem. Right. And, and so you've deployed all these solutions, lever leveraging these uh, open APIs. And then what happens is... Uh, 
you either decommission a system, maybe it's no longer, you've got a new system that does what the old system does. And so you, you decommission that system, but did you turn off that API? Did you delete that API so that it wasn't a backdoor that somebody could come in and use to penetrate your network? Yeah. Because if they have an API, if they can get access to an API, as you said, their traffic it, it appears to the network like normal traffic. And so they can get away with doing almost anything once they've gotten into the network, leveraging those APIs. And that's why API management has become important so that we're tracking it now and we're paying attention to what APIs we have deployed and what API goes with what specific solution. And that way, when it is time to decommission something or, 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 or there's a change in how you integrate with that system, you've got, a, you've got a mechanism to track that. And so I think that's the critical component. It is, but isn't this, you know, another spotlight on another trend and that, you know, APIs uh, security, we've just seen a big flush of talks out on the internet and social media right now. Um, but, you know, we also saw so much around Seam and integration on the other perspective of taking all these point solutions, generating all this data. The CISO can't make head nor tail of the enterprise now because of too much data. And so along comes some aggregation point. Is the effort going in the right place to put stuff in centralized aggregation points, Ted? And then what do we do about it? And to your point earlier, a, a report is a retrospective thing. So, you know, what does the CISO do? He's got all these, he, she's got all these wonderful bits of kit all integrating into a central point, but the effort's going into the central point, right? Rather than the Intel. Yeah, so so the way that the these point solutions communicate back to the mothership, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, is generally through your SIM. So your your event management system takes inputs from all of these point solutions, and when uh, and when a, one of these point solutions uh, recognizes a problem or, or or creates an alert, it sends that to the SIM. And then, and then ideally the enterprise is monitoring that SIM and, and somebody gets an email or a text or however it's set up saying, hey, you know, you, you've got a problem here, you need to address it. But but what's what's happened for CISOs is it's just created so much noise. So all the reports for, from all these point solutions is 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 overwhelming amount of data to go through and they just don't have the time and resources and so the the event management solution was a way for those point solutions to report back up to the enterprise at a high, higher level and um and so that's pretty much how everybody's using it right now uh and and it's 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 definitely not ideal for the CISO I, he definitely would prefer to have solutions that communicated with each other to um to to limit to, to to not only limit their attack surface but to reduce the amount of man hours that's required to just take care of all this stuff at the enterprise so hold on a minute by all these clever point solutions starting to draw this part of our conversation together what we're doing is we're shifting the problem from the threat to managing these point solutions, to managing vast amounts of data, which is distracting us and taking us away from the core problem. So you and I spoke also about in the past simplicity and simplicity in the CISO's mind, you know, how he, she can tackle and create simplicity. So how on earth do you do this, Ted, in a large enterprise, given that you inherit as a CISO usually all your point solutions, all your integrations, how do we make it simple? How do we start to re-engineer our process here to give us back our visibility, even though we've got the best amount of data that we've ever had? Yeah, so um, so one thing I will say is that there is some hope with artificial intelligence that we could unleash AI on all these reports and go through and, and, and identify the salient points that we really need to know about and just feed that up. 
I think that's you know one of the ways AI can help do um, what is normally an extremely manual process, mm -hmm. and and you know and just let a let the AI crawl through the reports. Uh, um, I I think that's I th I think you'll start to see that kind of thing. Great. And then you know people also don't understand that um, networks are organic, so they they start very small these you know these companies don't start as as a fortune 100 company you know they, they grow over time their networks expand because they need to have more communication with more divisions more partners more vendors whatever and so these networks expand over time and then you have to think about also the acquisitions so when you acquire a yes. company you're acquiring either all their bad habits or all the good habits. And you have to figure out how to bring that into your system, tie all that into your SIM and make sure that's all working. And so, so it's not, you know, networks, networks are, 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 are sophisticated and they, and they grow organically, which makes it a bit of a challenge. I have never heard anyone call acquisitions the inheritance of bad habits but now i think of it that's what happens isn't it you know you um i'm sure you've seen it but we've seen clients that have finally conquered as best they can their own core org and then they go and acquire another company different stacks different point solutions total mess and the bad habits i've not heard it expressed like that but tell us about bad habits and hygiene because hygiene is still not being managed is it and and what do we define in your sort of mind as a CISO CISO advisor of hygiene and what are the important points there Ted? So what I see out there is um, every year a, a CISO you know identifies a, a product that they need to deploy um, in my opinion it's like the next shiny object you know, it's going to cost the company six figures and it, it may solve it may solve a specific problem um, for that CISO. And so the CISO tends to be focused on the shiny bobble and let's get this new thing deployed. And he's got his whole team focused on that when they don't have the basics done, the basics in place. It's like it's like it's like. Um, it's like putting in the most sophisticated security system and deciding not to lock the front door. Like, like you know, the most basic thing, right? The, the thing you should do, whether you had the alarm system or not, you should have locked the door. So these companies, the enterprises have uh, real challenges around health and hygiene and just making sure that they're doing the, the the patching that needs to get done with all of the applications. Um, every application that they deploy uh, gets an update at some point. And, and so updating all the software and patching all that software is absolutely critical. And it needs to be done in a fairly uh, short period of time because the threat out there, the, these guys find out really quickly where these back doors are, where, or where these problems are, and they look for companies that haven't implemented the fix yet, so they can leverage that what whatever that weak point is to get into the network. So you know, doing your patching and doing it on at least very minimal a weekly basis, and making sure every application that you have is your that you're running the most current version will minimize the opportunity for somebody to breach your network. Oh, uh, wise words spoken, Ted, wise words. Um, in the next part of our conversation, because I, I did have a feeling that we would have quite a lot to discuss today, we'll discuss breadth of knowledge and not knowing it all. And then I think you also wanted to share some of your sort of top four or five things on those elements of hygiene and what one needs to do so in the next part of this conversation we'll just cover those but for now ted thank you very much absolutely appreciate your time